Hello, welcome back to another episode of Explosions and Fire. Today we have a simple mission. Last episode I said this, how do we set titanium on fire? I want to set the bulk titanium on fire, but for now I have to declare that it's not flammable. That's unacceptable. Titanium is a flammable metal, we should be able to set it on fire. I read a lot of comments on the last video talking about things that we could try. There were a lot of comments about taking the titanium plate, turning it into powder and then lighting that powder on fire. Yes, titanium powder is flammable, but that defeats the point. If we take the plate and turn it into powder, we're just lighting the powder on fire. Is this being pedantic? I could make myself smaller, and then the bits of powder would look like plates, but the atoms of oxygen would be the same size. I'm getting off track already. We've got a simple goal this video, and I'm already getting off track. We're staying on track. Surface area obviously matters, but I want to know if bulk titanium as the plate is flammable enough. I don't think it's reactive enough and will get hot enough from its own burning to continue its own melting to keep exposing more titanium to the air. It's pretty easy to find examples however of people talking about bulk titanium fires and while I've got no reason to disbelieve them I like seeing experimental evidence you know you could say anything you could tell me there was nuclear testing on Mars but what evidence do you have? I mean you could draw pretty convincing blast radius maps with the craters and it would explain why the hemispheres are so different. The noble gas isotopes are really consistent with a nuclear blast and there's no other real way known of making those isotopes, so... Wait. What? To set titanium plates on fire, I think the answer is pretty obvious, and a lot of people suggested this. You need to go to oxyacetylene. Acetylene is an incredibly energy dense gas because it's got this carbon-carbon triple bond in it. So when you react it with oxygen, you can reach incredibly high flame temperatures of over 3000 degrees, which is hotter than hydrogen or any propane or MAP gas. It's way hotter than that. It's one of the hottest flame temperatures you can reach. And the oxyacetylene torch lets you balance a cylinder of oxygen and a cylinder of acetylene in a, in a careful sort of dance between burning and trying not to let the whole thing explode in your hands. I gotta defend myself a little bit here. A lot of scientists aren't very good with practical skills or like trade skills. And that's because doing a trade, unlike science, is actually difficult and requires some level of skill. With enough oxyacetylene practice, I begin to approach the skill level of a 14 year old on his very first apprenticeship, which is good enough for me. And honestly, once you get over most of the fear of it, it starts to become pretty fun, you know, to cut through metals. I can cut through this bloody pair of scissors. Yeah. Actually, can we experimentally verify the flame temperature? I think we can. So the first metal we have here is molybdenum, which melts at 2,620 degrees, and we pretty easily melt it. I mean, we're obviously going to oxidize these metals here because we're throwing oxygen at them at thousands of degrees. So they're going to do some weird chemistry here, but you can see we've definitely melted the molybdenum. And the next metal we have here is tantalum, which has a melting point of pretty much exactly 3,000 degrees. So if we can melt that, we've managed to get a flame temperature of over 3,000 degrees. And once again, even though the metal is not very reactive, we did oxidize it a little, and we did manage to melt it as well. So our flame temperature is above 3,000 degrees. And the last metal we have here is tungsten, which has a melting point of 3,410 degrees. So we shouldn't be able to melt it. And if we pump so much heat into it, we see it slump a little. Maybe it starts to oxidize and evaporate. Well, I mean, it's definitely oxidizing, but we don't seem to be able to melt. So we know our flame temperature is somewhere between 3,000 degrees Celsius and 3,400 degrees Celsius, which is fairly consistent with what we see online in reports of about 3,200 degrees. We can melt pretty much every metal on earth except tungsten tungsten and a few others. So it is nice to have experimental verification of that. Um, but uh, who, who's launching the nukes? Was no one on Mars? There was no one on Mars. So our flame is definitely hot enough to melt the titanium at 1,600 degrees. But does it burn? Well, let's hit the thin foil with it and I mean, yeah, it, it does burn. I mean, the foil doesn't really get consumed and it takes a little while, but man, those sparks are pretty bloody bright and they would definitely start a fire elsewhere if um, there was some flammable stuff lying around. Under the slow-mo, we see these small bits of titanium are melting, burning off and just sort of exploding in the air. I guess they just get very hot and the oxygen reacts with them and, and, and at some point they just 
burst, but it's it's really great seeing it in slow mo. This really sudden sort of oh, I guess it's an explosion of of these little bits of titanium. I like how they really float in the air, kind of just drift around a little bit until they blow up. It's fantastic. But what about the thick plate of titanium? Can we set that on fire? Well, it takes a little while because these plates are like 100 grams, so it can dissipate a lot of heat, but eventually <laughs> we do generate, once again, a huge shower of sparks, um, which is definitely able to set fire elsewhere <laughs> if um, there was anything else flammable lying around. Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck, that was bright. Whoa. As an aside, I want to talk about how cool these acetylene bottles are because you can't compress acetylene because it can explosively polymerize and it's not safe to transport like a normal gas. So what gets done is the acetylene gets dissolved in acetone and it's a special cylinder. When you open the cylinder, the acetylene bubbles out of the acetone and that's how you can safely transport it. And it means that Australia has no way of recycling these bottles because they have to be specially recycled. So what's been happening for the last couple of decades is all the gas companies, when these bottles get out of service, have just been stockpiling them because they can't throw them out. It's illegal to dump them. It's not economical to ship them overseas. The other day, they dug up tens of thousands of acetylene bottles that have been illegally dumped. There has been a new company recently that have set up to try and recycle these acetylene bottles. In the meantime, we're just still using acetylene bottles and there's no mechanism to get rid of them. Okay, so in Australia, we kind of care about the environment, I guess, I mean, on a local level, right? People like to recycle. We've been recycling for ages. We've got dedicated bins for it. The government always runs these ads that's like, gotta put stuff in the recycling bin. So we have, and it turns out that the government has just not been recycling because it's not economic enough or whatever. And in a great betrayal of public trust, they've just been sending the plastics overseas to be burnt, right? Because it's just too hard to recycle them. They couldn't be bothered. And when it started becoming public knowledge, people got a little bit annoyed of that because the government had been telling people to recycle they thought it was a good thing you know people weren't really caring about how much plastic they were buying obviously all the companies were putting heaps of packaging material in it because no one was feeling guilty about the plastic because they were putting it in the recycling bin and it was going to get recycled but actually it was going over so in come a company called red cycle and what they do is they say well the problem with the recycling thing is that it's just too complicated so what we're going to do is just set up dedicated soft plastic bins and then all the supermarkets thought this was a great idea they got all involved put all these dedicated soft plastic bins in there and people really picked up on it because they wanted to actually recycling you're like well the recycling bin just gets dumped elsewhere but if I separate all, all my soft plastics and put it in the soft plastic bin they'll be doing something with it and then it turned out after they put bins in every single supermarket around here Red Cycle weren't actually recycling it they were just stockpiling it in a warehouse and then the warehouse burned down and it became public knowledge that they weren't even trying to recycle it they were just stockpiling it for no reason and in response the government just allowed plastics to be exported overseas to be burnt again how did Mars have nuclear weapons thousands of years ago and in the current year Australia can't even recycle polyethylene but what if we put some oxidizer on the titanium? We've got a thick plate of titanium, we'll put a whole load of potassium nitrate on there, and then we'll put on a thin plate of titanium, and we'll begin to torch that again with the oxyacetylene torch. Once again, it doesn't really sustain its own burning once the torch has been removed. It obviously glows very bright, extremely bright, impossible to look at without glasses and even then it still kind of hurts a little as soon as we remove the flame it doesn't keep burning so it doesn't really seem that flammable and doesn't seem like the oxidizing agent in potassium nitrate is really fueling that fire very good I've got some sodium bromate instead as an oxidizer because it's got a halogen in there and I thought maybe the titanium will react with the halogen and that's sort of volatile and it might get removed but once again it still doesn't really burn that well I don't know, it's a flammable metal, but it's not that flammable. And once again, we really have to compare it to magnesium. Here, we once again put some oxidizer down and we've got a plate of magnesium. And we're gonna be hitting it with the oxyacetylene torch, just for reference of what a really flammable metal does actually look like. <laughs> and um, Woo! 
this is a tremendous fire. It's tremendous. Even through the very darkened glasses, there's no way I could look at that. While this burns, I'd like to thank my Patreons for forever keeping me on track and also supporting my upcoming eye surgeries. I am blind with rage at the Australian government. I feel like we've reached a healthy conclusion to this video. We'll call that a win. Um, <laughs> I'll see you next time.